So I'm here with Roy, and I pulled into the country club, and he gave me a book, Dam Break in Georgia. And he's about to tell me a beautiful, sad story of compassion and love of what happened in this town that is so powerful, I had to pull over and break out my tripod and record his beautiful story. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's see. This happened, it'll be 41 years ago this November, uh, 1977, November, I think the 6th. Uh, I had just gotten married that July, and we lived in what we called Upper Trailerville at Tacoa Falls College. And, um, and I was working on my senior papers like one, after one in the morning, on a Sunday morning. And uh, our lights went out. And they went out uh, like I'd never seen them go out before. I mean, it wasn't like the switch was turned off. They just go down. It just uh, went down to a glow. It was very strange. And then the bulb was actually still just a, like a little bit of light in the. I thought, gosh, that's strange. And I thought, I'm going outside and see what's going on. And as I, uh, we lived on the side of a hill in what we called Upper Trailerville there in, at uh, Tacoa Falls. And I could see the valley. At that time, it was a cow pasture. Now, today, it's a soccer field and a baseball field. And as I looked down, I saw the uh, Tacoa Creek kind of wound through the, the pasture. And I saw like a, maybe a two or three foot wave of water that just kind of wound. And I thought, gosh, that, now that's strange. And I could hear this rushing sound, it's just hard to describe, a rushing sound echoing through the valley. And I told my wife, uh, I said, Kathy, get, get ready to get the dogs and get up the hill. I think the dam broke. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a while to remember each thing that happened. We had, there were two friends ran up, one uh, Sharon Mitchell. She was about eight months pregnant and she had run up from uh, Lower Trailerville. She said Rick wanted to get the car. That was her husband. Later I saw him, he said, Roy, I got in the car and the water hit it and it began to raise up and I just jumped out and climbed up the hill to get out. They lost their car, obviously. The other girl was uh, Denise Warner. Uh, she lost her mom and sister. Uh, her mom and dad were missionaries home on furlough from missionaries to Chile. And uh, he was working at night, uh, but Denise got out uh, and she actually saw the water coming and ran through Lower Trailerville, just banging on trailers, trying to alert people, and then ran on up the hill uh, to where we were. We kind of huddled and prayed, and, and um, at some point I had pulled my car out and I, and I just I saw like the school bus float by in my headlights. It, it just, uh, it, I've never experienced anything like this. Uh, we uh, uh, I eventually I drove my car down to, to the water's edge. Uh, I had figured that it wasn't going ri to rise anymore and left my car there with the lights on thinking maybe someone would see the uh, headlights and, and be able to get to it. Uh, at another point, uh, there was a barbed wire fence along the, the, uh, the road and the water had come, hadn't gotten to the road, but up to the fence. Uh, I went down to the fence and I saw, uh, or I heard, it was at night so I didn't see, but I heard uh, there was a girl crying and a man's voice with her. And they were up in a tree, so I kind of, got over the fence, kind of waded out, knee deep to waist deep. And uh, it was a, a, a fellow that I knew, uh, it was his first semester. It turns out he lost his wife and baby. Uh, but he had heard a child crying and thinking well, may, that might be my wife or my child. He dove in to find a neighbor's young daughter on a, uh, a baby bed mattress and they had floated into this tree and so 
I'm hollering, uh, you know, can you try to get to me? I'm not too far from you. He said, this, the water's too swift. I, I don't think I can hold on. I said, just hang on. It's got, to, it's got to subside. It's got to quit soon. And about the time I said that, he said, the, the, the current's almost stopped. I think I can make it. And so they, they uh, swam over to me, and uh, a friend, another friend that lived up near me came down, and, and we lifted the young girl over the fence, and, and we got this fellow over the fence. He was barefooted. I said, are you okay? I think his name was David, but uh, Metzger, I believe, was his last name. Anyway, I, uh, I said, are you okay? He said, well, I, I had uh, something pinched my leg or something hit my leg, but it seems okay now. And um, this is, you know, later in the hospital they asked him that and he told them that same thing. They x-rayed his leg and they said, well, it's okay, but there is, there's a, uh, there's the scar tissue from a, uh, from where you broke your leg, you know, as a child maybe, but uh, it's okay now. And he said, I I've never broken my leg. And, you know, all I can figure is, is God healed his leg right there in the water. I don't know. But uh, anyway, he and I went up and he said, there are other people coming through the woods. We uh, went up into the woods and found about, uh, I don't know, eight to 10 people and brought them to our trailer. And, uh, it, and it, we, just, we just kind of huddled there. There were, I can't even remember, maybe 15 or 20 of us, may have been more that uh, were in the upper Trailerville area and then the ones that had come up from lower Trailerville. Um, they took us out uh, that morning and kind of guided us through the debris. Um, it was, uh, in the end, I think there were 39 lives lost. Those were uh, teachers, uh, students, uh, staff, various staff uh, people and um, uh, oh now this was kind of an interesting story I, when I had driven my car down to the water's edge I saw this trailer floating that had a light on and I thought now that that's really crazy how could that be and then all of a sudden it hits another trailer and the light goes out well about two weeks later I'm sitting they had taken us to a local Baptist uh, conference ground and uh, I was eating breakfast uh, there and one of the last ones in the cafeteria and this guy Jerry Nicholson he's a couple of tables over he said Roy did you get your car started and uh, I said yeah I said what do you know about that he said well we saw you over on the edge standing by your car with the lights on and uh, he, he said what happened the water hit our trailer it just lifted it up he said it was almost like being on a boat and we wrote, I, I remembered I had a Coleman lantern in the back. So we walked back, got that lantern, and it lit, lit it and was able to, uh, you know, just to kind of ride the, along the current. And he said, we hit something. I said, I saw that. You hit another trailer. And he said, the lantern went out of my hand. And, um, and, and we just all, we just thought we better get in the water. and. We saw you and were trying to get to you, and and we were hollering and I I don't remember hearing anything, but uh, he said all of a sudden the current shifted and what happened is that that this great wall of water just went up into a part of the valley and went as far as it could go and then washed back and and it washed them back down to the uh, Highway 17 bridge, but uh, it it. You know, it was a terrible tragedy, but lives were changed. Uh, you know, uh, uh, lives were lost, but uh, it, it's just uh, uh, God worked in the lives of people, though. It's, it's strange how that works, I guess. But uh, anyway, that's most of my recollections there. Thank you, Roy, for sharing sure. that story. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Thank welcome. you for sharing sure. that story. Sure. That was beautiful. Well, take that and read. I can't wait to read each, it. Because uh, each chapter is a, a testimony.
and so it's you know it's just each is complete in itself that's this is about I think the founding of the college here this chapter but uh, I will read it with love. Yep, yeah. And your well, house great. is in here. You want to show uh, the oh, yeah, picture yeah, yeah, your, yeah. Well, of your house before? I... Well, yeah, wouldn't be able to. Uh, they wouldn't be able to see this. Uh, this was it right here in this picture. Hold it that right there. Yeah. That one right there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There right there's terrible quality of the. Uh, it's beautiful. The, this uh, there's a reprint, so a much better. It's beautiful, Roy. Thank you <laughs> yeah. so much for your time, Roy. Sure. You're a gem. Uh, You're an well, absolute gem. Well, we're glad y'all are here. And I'm, I'm, I, my prayer is that someday a movie can be made about, about this experience. Because I think people, uh, God would still use that dam break to change lives. I'll see what I can do, Roy. <laughs> okay.